and he called uh, Cynthia Papermaster to present Toby Blum. It was called Toby Up To. Let's give these people appreciation for fight for our rights. started really uh, showing a lot of barbarism and 
horrible uh, violations against Muslim people around the world, he became radicalized, and so he left his family to fight against U.S. imperialism. So we not only killed his father, but then we killed, uh, within two weeks later, his 16-year-old American citizen boy, who was just sitting in a restaurant in Yemen with other children, that also got killed that day. Uh, Tariq Aziz, a 16-year-old boy from Pakistan who lost his cousin from a drone strike. Um, some of you, raise your hand if you know Tariq Aziz. I've heard the name. Have you heard of him? I've yeah. Um, so he was at a uh, jirga in Pakistan in 2012 or 13, 12, I think it was. I'm sorry, I've lost track. Actually, no, 2011. And um, this jirga was organized by some British activists as well as activists against drones in Pakistan, trying to come together as a community in Pakistan and Islamabad. And what are we going to do about U.S. drone strikes? And he had lost a loved one, a family member, and he had pledged at the end of the several day jirga that he was going to learn photography so he could go back to the tribal areas and north western Pakistan to photograph the victims of drones. And he wasn't home in his community for more than a day or two. 16-year-old boy driving with his cousin who was 12 years old, just the two of them on their way to play a soccer game, and a U.S. Hellfire missile came flying down in their car and their bodies were charred instantly. Some more beautiful children who have been killed by drone, U.S. drone missiles. And the stories go on and on, but unfortunately, the Americans don't hear about these stories unless you listen to Democracy Now! or you're not going to hear about it from President Obama. And so we're going to continue our struggle. There are two grandmothers who just got sentenced this week in New York. One who got sentenced, uh, what was her crime? Uh, Mary Ann Flores Grady. She uh, was forbidden to go back to Hancock in New York. Um, that's what they do, is they give us uh, restraining orders in New York. Just like if you have uh, an abusive husband, he's supposed to stay away from his ex-wife. Well, they're doing that to non-violent protesters in New York. So she got one of those, but she went back to Hancock, not to protest, but to actually photograph those were, who were protesting. And she got, her, um, uh, she got arrested for violating this, uh, this order of protection, they call it. And uh, ultimately, she just got sentenced this, this month to six months. Six months of her life she's spending in jail because she uh, was photographing protesters at, nonviolently at a drone base in America. And another grandmother just got sentenced to a couple hundred dollars, or she got fined a couple hundred dollars and was told if she didn't pay it within 60 days, she would have it attached to her income tax. But we in California have been lucky. We've not served any jail time. The only thing, we've had, we've had a few trials, but um, we've only had to pay uh, court fees. And we go up to Beale every month um, and for a two-day encampment. And we need more people, we need it to grow, because we're very lucky in California that we haven't had to face jail time. They're a, they don't want attention because they, they've kept the drone story away from most American public. So they, they're really trying to keep it low profile. We need hundreds of people up at Bila for Space at Creech. Uh, last spring we had 150 people from 20 different states converging for shut, our first shutdown Creech Air Force Base. Shutdown Creech, we call it. And 50 of, over 50 of them were veterans. And we uh, had 34 people willing to risk arrest. It was a beautiful week-long action. We're going to do it again at the end of March. And it's going to last for a week into April 2nd. And so if you can join us or fund someone that you know to get down there, a young person that can tolerate it more, or someone who is retired, come join us. We want to have not 150 this time, but maybe 300 or 400, and just keep growing and expanding because these drone things are not just a few weapons that are used once in a while. They're becoming the weapon of choice by the U.S. military and the Pentagon. I just read that over half of the people killed by U the U.S. military in, in Afghanistan in the last year or so have been killed by drone missiles. So um, this is the way of the future unless we rise up and, and 
and stop it. I'm sorry, I can't stop talking about this. I'm really devoted to it. Um, so you have to forgive me, but um, thank you, uh, BFUU, for this really special award, and um, thank you for everything that each one of you are doing to make this world a better place. One time, I don't know if Toby remembers, we were in Washington, D.C. We were in front of Rumsfeld's house. Do you remember, Toby? And there was a young woman who got arrested. And this is just so typical of Toby. She knew that this woman hadn't been arrested before. So what did you do? You jumped over the fence no, and out of Rumsfeld's house. Through the bushes. In the bushes. How'd you do it? I climbed through a hole in the bushes. You, you climbed through a hole in the bushes, but just so that you wouldn't be alone. And that's how, that's the spirit of Toby and Tom. <laughs> and Toby went with me to Cheney's house out in McLean, Virginia, near the CIA, and played her nickel harbor. And I, we took turns wearing the big uh, Dick Cheney bottle head and uh, a jail suit, black and white striped jail suit. And Toby's bravery and commitment is just, it doesn't, there's no end to it. Um, and, but she went there out, out there with me and Jiminy Winks. Um, she didn't want me to go along. <laughs> Thank you, Toby. <laughs> okay, I mean, I'm going to remind you, don't forget to get your uh, CD, The Liberty Tree, by Rob Johnson and Leon Rosselson, and uh, a t-shirt that fits you. <laughs>